Uh, we have a question. Please, please explain more in sharpening, for example, detail, radius, and masking. I can do that. Um, it helps a lot if the image itself is zoomed into one-to-one. -one. Uh, in version two, they give you a one-to-one -one preview here, so you can actually see the effect of sharpening. It will not be apparent unless something is in one-to-one -one view. But I like having the whole image that way. I will also hide a couple of extraneous panels so I can see more of the image. I'll do that by clicking on the um, little arrows that you see off on the perimeter. So I'll click on that arrow. I'll even get rid of my film strip here so I have a bit more real estate. Heck, I can't even get rid of the one on the top. So I can at least see more of the preview. So amount is, just as it sounds, it's the amount of sharpening, which is the amount of contrast added near edges of things. Doesn't go as high as it does in Photoshop. They try to keep it sane. I'll crank it all the way up and make things look really horrible. Here. I'll give you the worst possible scenario. Maximum amount, maximum detail, and no masking. Looks beautiful. I'm kidding. Radius is a measure of how far the little halos you're now seeing extend, which is a, because sharpening is a trick. It's just making contrasty edges, right? We try to keep the radius about one, which is typical for most print-sized images. If the image is a, like this one uh, shot with a mere three megapixel camera, heck, that's not even a phone these days, um, I usually bring it down to 0.7 or so, something like that, just so those halos aren't so big. I'll leave the amount up high, just so you can see the effect of the other two that were asked about detail and masking. I'm going to use Option, though, for both of those. If I hold down Option and I drag the detail to the left, you'll see, eventually, in the main image, too, not just in the little preview, you'll see the effect of my reducing the detail from full to the usual default, which is around 25% and you'll see that there's less, whoops, less effect, except around the strongest edges. But it's still sharpening everywhere, just emphasizing larger chunks, stronger edges than dimmer ones. The masking slider, however, is the one that really controls if sharpening is happening in a certain place at all. And by dragging that slider to the right, again, holding down Option, you can limit the scope of sharpening to be just where it should be. So I drag that to the right. One of the things that, uh, reasons I turn off that auto-apply metadata to image when editing is every little time I move the slider, it's trying to write to the image. So I should probably turn that off. But So even with the amount cranked up all the way, if I make sure the detail's not too crazy and I've masked some of it, it actually looks semi-reasonable. I might pull that down to a reasonable level afterward just to be sure I'm not overdoing it. I hope that's helped. And that's the same way it is in Adobe Camera Raw. This is also great for portraiture. That was a method developed by uh, Photoshop hero Bruce Frazier. Used to be a very convoluted procedure. Now it's a slider. Awesome. 